The Aquariums of Pyongyang, Ten Years in the North Korean Gulag, by Kong Kul-hwan is a harrowing memoir that sheds light on the brutal realities of life inside North Korea's political prison camps. Through his personal experiences and observations, Kong provides readers with a rare and disturbing glimpse into a world marked by oppression, suffering, and dehumanization. Kang's narrative is structured as a first-hand account of his ten-year ordeal in Yodok, a notorious labor camp, where he was imprisoned alongside his family. From the very beginning, the author emphasizes the omnipresent fear that permeates every aspect of life in North Korea. Kang's family's downfall is initiated by his grandfather's alleged crime of supporting South Korea during the Korean War. This initial act of supposed treason serves as a chilling reminder of the regime's unforgiving nature, where guilt by association can lead to generations of suffering. The narrative strength lies in Kang's depiction of the everyday struggles endured by prisoners. The camp's conditions are akin to a nightmare, characterized by forced labor, inadequate rations, and constant surveillance. The dehumanizing effect of the regime's tactics is evident in the camp's nickname, Aquarium, a term that aptly conveys the isolation and vulnerability of the inmates. The prisoners are reduced to a state of survival where they become willing to betray even their own family members for a scrap of food. Kang's description of witnessing public executions serves to underline the authoritarian power wielded by the regime. The author's journey is marked by a constant oscillation between compliance and defiance. Kang's family learns to navigate the treacherous landscape of the prison by mastering the art of self-censorship and displaying unwavering loyalty to the regime, even if it means forsaking their own beliefs. Yet, moments of resistance and subversion are threaded throughout the narrative, revealing the flickers of humanity that the regime seeks to extinguish. Kang's friendship with Comrade O, oh, an older prisoner who secretly educates him, serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit even in the darkest of circumstances. Kang's eventual release from the camp is not portrayed as a triumph, but rather as a disorienting and painful process of readjustment. The trauma and lasting psychological impact of his experience are palpable, as he struggles to reconcile his memories of the camp with the reality of the outside world. The memoir thus presents a nuanced perspective on freedom and liberation, challenging the notion that physical release equates to emotional or mental healing. The author's prose is straightforward and unembellished, mirroring the starkness of the events he recounts. Kang's narrative voice is marked by a mix of detachment and intensity, a coping mechanism that allows him to recount the horrors he witnessed without becoming overwhelmed by emotion. This narrative style contributes to the book's impact, forcing readers to confront the raw and unfiltered truth of life under a totalitarian regime. In conclusion, The Aquariums of Pyongyang, Ten Years in the North Korean Gulag, is a searing account of the cruelties and injustices endured by political prisoners in North Korea's labor camps. Kong Kol Hwan's storytelling offers a powerful and haunting exploration of the human capacity to endure and resist, even in the face of extreme adversity. Through his experiences, readers are confronted with the disturbing reality of a regime that seeks to erase individuality and break the spirit of its citizens. This memoir stands as a poignant reminder of the importance of preserving human dignity and the ongoing struggle for freedom in even the most oppressive of environments.